Hi Brenda, uh, this is Mike from Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine and this is your FOF 130 and this is the final test before we pack her up to uh, ship her home to you uh, and we're going to uh, start by winding a bobbin which of course you'll find in your bobbin case This is your bobbin winder up here, of course, but uh, you know that, you're uh, an experienced sewer. Um, some of this, you know, is probably going to be uh, uh, stuff you already know, but we like to just basically go over the uh, controls and the operation of the machine, uh, just in case there's anything that's uh, new or unfamiliar to you. Uh, and let's see, wind the bobbin and thread. Hmm, that's probably enough thread for our test. So put your spool of thread on the spool pin. Go under the first thread guide, then over the little tension device here. And uh, I guess back under the thread guide because we're going to go down this way to the tension device for the bobbin winder which is down here that's from here we go up into your bobbin we take off this old thread so from the tension device go up and into your bobbin uh, now to the little slot in the side, holding the thread on the outside there. The thread several wraps around the bobbin. And uh, make sure you're still in your tension device. And your thread's going to go onto the bobbin over the top, just like on a Singer or your Montgomery Wards. Press down the... Uh, oh, whatever you call that little lever, little thumb lever, uh, so that your bobbin winder is in contact with the hand wheel and the little keeper uh, finger here is down inside the bobbin. Declutch your machine by turning the knob in the center of the hand wheel a quarter turn towards you, or so, till it hits its stop. And then wind away. Clutch your machine. Put the bobbin in the bobbin case with the thread coming off the top to the right. Then double back into that little slot inside of the bobbin case and keep going up under the little leaf spring until the thread clicks into place and you feel a little bit of drag on your thread there. Easiest way to remove and install the bobbin case on the FOF 130 is to tip the head back rather than try to fish down through the uh, slide plate. Make sure it's seated all the way. Put the thread on this uh, rod. Probably got an official name. I just don't happen to know it. Okay. Uh, from the uh, bobbin, go under that thread guide over the tension device there. And down into the tension assembly here all the way around back to the top so you can catch the check spring here 
And then under the big thread guide, into this round thread guide here above it, and through your take up lever from right to left. Catch the thread guide on the face plate, the thread guide on the needle clamp, and then go through your needle from front towards the back. Okay, holding your needle thread, turn the hand wheel towards you, one full revelation, and uh, the needle will take the thread down where the uh, hook will pick it up and wrap it around the bobbin and bring up your lower thread. Put your thread between the, the toes of the presser foot and then towards the back, and we're ready to sew. There you go, here's a nice piece of double denim. As you can see, it's been slightly used. Got the uh, presser foot using the lever on the back there. And give it a little gas. Oh wait, first let's check our stitch length. Because right now we are all the way up to the longest stitch length, which we don't need. On this machine, the center position, of course, is zero. As you go down, your stitches get longer and longer and longer in reverse, which is different from most machines. And up from zero, your stitches get longer and longer and longer and longer and forward. So we're going to go down to about, oh, say two and a half. Um, let's see, our stitch width here is on zero. So we're doing straight stitch, about 12 or so in stitches per inch. And we're ready to go. Go slow. After or real fast. This is a nice strong machine. I've always loved the uh, Bob 130. Oh, but a nice stitch. Really pretty. And it looks like it's well balanced. We're going to do a longer stitch. Reverse, forward, reverse, forward. Ah, let's see, let's go back to the end. A plethora of threads on there and they do like to get caught around the presser foot be not cautious okay this is your stitch width of course uh, zero straight stitch you can go from zero. so you need lift your needle out before you uh, Change your stitch width so you don't bend your needle. You can see you've got a nice wide zero on your stitch width. I'll set it about two. Let's see. A wider stitch. There we go.
So these are the stitches that we just made here. Uh, this is the first straight stitch. This is the longer straight stitch, and then some forward and reversing, which actually kind of turns that into a uh, stretch stitch. Huh. Anyway, uh, and up top here is your zigzag. We started out small and then went wider. So it looks good, both sides, nice, well balanced and even. And uh, makes a little bit of a tick tick sound. And uh, I haven't been able to locate the source of the tick tick, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. It works great, runs fast, it sews perfectly. Um, anyway, uh, so stitch length, stitch width, tension. Um, we usually, uh, when we reassemble the machine we set it up so that this uh the best tension for regular fabric uh you know medium weight fabric is around three two and a half to three uh adjust up a little bit if your stitches are loopy on the bottom down a little bit if it's puckering up but you know all of that uh this is your sewing foot pressure adjuster here down for more pressure up for less pressure um, light. Um, there's a chance that uh, during shipping, this screw right here is going to get loose. It's the motor screw. And uh, it just, they just kind of sometimes work uh, not loose, but not as tight as they should be uh, during shipping. If the motor is too loose, uh, just Pull it down to where the belt is snug but not tight. You want to be able to pinch or oh, a half inch or so on the belt. Um, uh, and then tighten this screw. Just tighten it real good and tight. And um, let's see, where's the, there we go. Good and tight. And your plug in for the uh, cord which is on the same screw. Uh, it doesn't matter how you set it. It can be down or up or sideways or whatever. Um, just make sure that your, uh, your motor screw is tight. Otherwise, um, you're, uh, you're not gonna have enough belt tension and it's not gonna turn the machine. You want the uh, belt to be just snug enough that it turns the machine with authority uh, but no more than that, because if you get it any tighter, uh, it tends to slow and bog down the machine. So snug, but not over tight. Um, oil her, uh, if you're sewing all day, every day, uh, oil her every couple of days. If you sew a couple hours a week, uh, oil your machine every two months or so. Uh, if you go a long, long period of not sewing and then you bring your machine out to sew and it's been more than, say, three months, um, oil the machine because uh, the oil does evaporate and you want your parts to be slipping and sliding on a nice thin film of oil and not grinding against each other. Uh, just a couple of drops in each oil hole. You can see the oiling points here. And your user manual will uh, will uh, have a diagram of all the oiling points. Use uh, good quality sewing machine oil. Don't use household oil like WD-40 or 3-in-1. Uh, every couple of times you oil, take this plate off. It's only two screws. Uh, and brush out the lint around your feed dogs brush and vacuum the dust out uh, because the uh, polyester thread dust is uh, abrasive and uh, you don't need that in there so brush and vacuum that out once in a while oh and your uh the uh pressure the uh foot control for your uh, Montgomery Ward's machine is in here. Uh, 
your problem was a uh, a little break in the wire somewhere inside the insulation where you couldn't see it um, and sometimes if the cord was flexed just the right way it would make contact and if it wasn't flexed the right way it didn't make contact so I replaced that cord and uh, your foot control is working great now if you have come here from somewhere else on the internet found a link and followed it to this video um, we are Stagecoach Road Vintage Sewing Machine, and we restore vintage sewing machines. We are on Stagecoach Road out here in the Coast Range of Oregon, so we are stagecoachroadsewing.com. And if you come out to our website, uh, you can see hundreds, literally hundreds of beautiful machines that we've restored over the years. Uh, views from all different angles, a little bit of information about the machine. Um, and at the top of the page, there are usually uh, several machines uh, that are available for you to uh, bring home to your sewing room. So uh, check us out. Again, that is stagecoachroadsewing.com. And we'll see you there.